Hi, Bill here with 30 Minute Wet Shop. Thanks for joining. Well, all the Christmas gifts are done. I finished up the coasters. I finished up the cigar uh, and whiskey holders. I finished up the whiskey samplers. I've got all the things I needed. Cut all, laser cut all the uh, tree ornaments and all that kind of stuff. I even finished up all my cutting boards. This is the last one. It's going to one of my wife's friends. This one's actually pretty cool because it uses uh, what is this? Uh, Brazilian cherry is the primary, the primary pieces and some real, some American cherry, along with some accents for walnut and whatnot, and some orange agate. If you want to make one of these, by the way, jump up here real quick, click on that, and you can see how it's done. Super simple. I'll put a link in the bottom, and you can check those out uh, for the materials. All you do is glue it together, sand it out, put some oil on it, and you're good to go. But I'm kind of really tired of making these boards. They're kind of boring. So let's make another project, a really good uh, kitchen project. This is gonna be a kitchen dish drying rack. All right, super easy to make. Now, if you want a, a uh, drawing for this, all right, as always, these are uh, available on my blog. Go ahead, go down there, the bottom, hit see more, check it out, go to the blog, and you'll be able to download one of these. Super easy. Now, to make this project, Really, the only tools you need is a drill, okay, and a handsaw. I'm gonna use a few more things, a little bit, a uh, little bit different than that, but super easy to make. Go ahead, check this out. All right. Now, what do I need for materials? For materials, all you're gonna need is a couple pieces of like 18 to 20 inch long pieces of wood that are three quarter thick by about one inch wide. So I got two of those pieces here, and these are. Let's see. These have to be 24 inches. We're only going to use about 18 and a half inches of, of these things, but no problem. And then you're going to need some dowels, all right? So I have these maple dowels. So this is maple and this is maple. I'm using maple because it's a tight grain wood, absorbs water much, much less, all right? So in the water environment, you're going to see super easy to uh, use these kind of things and not soak up a lot of water. But all that said, I got three of these. These are, these are, uh, what are these, 36 inches long. And we'll be cutting out 22 towels, all right? So the materials are listed right here on, on the drawing. You can download that, check it out. And uh, so let's get started. Okay, first, as we move into the new year, okay, make sure you folks are using the correct safety equipment anytime you're using power tools. Safety glasses, hearing protection. I personally like these isotunes. Uh, there's a link in the bottom for them. That way I can listen to the music, right? I can listen to things. I can pick up uh, phone calls if I need to. Absolutely phenomenal. But whatever you choose, make sure you're wearing hearing protection, right? You only have one set of ears. You don't want to be deaf when you're 85, okay? The other thing is eye protection. Make sure you have some kind of eye protection. You only have one set of eyes. Anything could happen. Make sure you protect your eyes. All right, now come on in here and I'll show you what I, my setup looks like. First thing I want to do is I want to cut 22 dowels. All right, they're going to be four and three quarters inches long. All I've done is set up a, a block here that's four and three quarters from the blade. I'll just push these in, cut, 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 easy as pot. All right, let's get started. All right, next step here, after all that cutting, uh, is to do some marking. Now, very easy to do. All you do is take the dimensions off of the uh, drawing, lay those out, super simple, all right? So, knowing what I'm doing, done, 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 done. Okay. I'm going to carry those marks all the way across. This makes it really easy. Just make sure you're lined up properly on both ends when you do this. And all you're going to do is do a, just mark across. Now we've got all those done, what we want to do is we want to do a quick center line mark. Now I know this is one inch wide, so I'm going to set my square to half inch 
And I'm just going to walk down here and mark all these. This will give me a center point. With all these done, next thing I want to do, I'm using a, a uh, uh, awl. And all I'm going to do is just mark, I'm just putting a point where each one of these is, cross point. That way the drill's got some place to start. And now we're ready to drill. Really could just use a, a regular hand drill, drill motor with a, a uh, drill in it. What I'm going to use actually is my drill press. So let's go down to the drill press. Okay, we got a couple things going on here. Um, I set this up so I can drop the center of the drill directly into the hole that I left. Now, be sure whenever you do this, you test the uh, hole size. The 3 8 is not always 3 8 I'm actually using a 23 64 inch drill, so it's going to be a little bit tight, but it's better than being too loose. So I'm going to drop these in for about uh, 3 8 to a half inch deep. The holes are in. Now I'll do is do a quick cutoff. With the holes in, everything cut up. Now it's time to do some sanding. I'm using 220 grit here. It'll end up making this nice and smooth. All right, next step here. You don't have to do this. You could just sand the edges, but I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, eighth inch round over a bit and just give this a quick round over. Okay, we're down to final assembly. All I'm going to do is take these, do a quick dip in some glue here that I have on the paper. Doesn't take a lot. This is waterproof glue. And knock them in. I need one more thing though. I want to wipe off any excess. And that was a little too much. So be careful how much you put on, how much glue you put on. It doesn't take a lot, okay? And we'll just keep knocking these things in until we're all done. With all these set, we do a couple things. One, turn it upside down to make sure we've got them all sunk to the same depth. And you also look down just to make sure that nothing's too twisted or bent one way or the other. Like that one's a little out of, out of whack. And just make sure that they're all square and level. Next thing we want to do is we're going to put the uh, cross pieces in. So I'll put a little glue on both ends. We'll drop it in here. So next I want to throw some glue on these ends. And I'll just use what I have here in the paper. Line it up and hammer it home. And again, make sure you wipe off any excess glue. All right, so now the next thing I want to do and you don't have to do this, is I'm putting on some feet. The reason I'm putting on feet is this, this reason. If it's sitting on the counter and there's water, the whole piece is sitting in the water. This will raise it up by about a quarter inch. So I've got four of these little quarter inch pieces. And all I'm going to do is, it's called a rub joint. I'm just going to rub it Make sure it's all squared up. So you got to put a little on here. And one thing you do when you do a rub joint, make sure you get you want to put enough glue, but not so much that it squirts everywhere. Rub on it and squeeze it. If you have to pull it off to check the joint, make sure you got full glue coverage. Be sure you do that. You don't really want to get glue uh, areas where there's no glue contact. That's a spot where water can get in. And there we go. 
All right, we'll give this a couple hours to dry, then we'll come back, put a finish on it, and the project will be done. Well, this is a great, easy, and fun kitchen project. So you only need a few tools to get this job done. Really, all you need is a handsaw and a drill, and it's a great project for kids. You can cut it, drill the holes, and have the kids pound in the, the uh, dowels. They'll have a great time. Now I have to say, weather turned here in Michigan. It's sunny and minus three in southern Michigan. Got to say, uh, had to move the finishing into the basement so I get that done. I did put on three coats of a spar bar, spar varnish, actually a Helmsman varnish. It's an indoor outdoor varnish. So three coats sprayed on. Uh, make sure if you do that, you do the bottoms. All right, three or four coats should be good uh, because it's going to be sitting in water and whatnot. But uh, but hey. There you go, easy to do. Now, if, like always, if you want a uh, dimension drawing, dimension sketch, go down here, 30minutewoodshop.com, okay? And uh, you can pull that right down. Materials and things that I use, tools and whatnot, are also in the bottom of this. Hit see more. You can go click on those links and explore that. And uh, hey, folks, until next time, good making.